Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to support the channel, follow me on Twitch to watch the streams, and like and subscribe for cheerier canon events next time you play. Maybe. Today we have a build for Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. Say, if I had a nickel for every time we did a character that was the fanged, clawed antagonist of an animated sequel with blended 2D, 3D animation styles, and the internet got extremely thirsty for, and it came out in the last year, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. When worlds collide, you'll laugh so hard, you'll swear you died when worlds collide. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to do whatever a spider can. Spin a web, any size. Catch thieves just like something you catch. Next, we need to do whatever a 2099 can. Apparently, we hit a tech utopia in the next 70 years or so. That's pretty optimistic. I think we're gonna be underwater. Finally, underneath that armor, we just need to be a misunderstood, sad vampire. It's probably why people love him so much. That and the wagon he's dragging. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence will be number one. Science is built on the shoulders of giants, and you've got 70 plus years of extra gains to stand on. Wisdom next, that's the Spidey Sense stat, can't have it anyone sneaking up on you. Dexterity at 13, it would be great if it was higher, get used to that because Spider-Men are the definitive good at everything without training characters. Just a magic spider bite, and whoa, they're buff and hot and can't be surprised and can backflip. Big Mary Sue energy, which is wild when you consider how monostat dependent Ray was, almost like there's something else people don't like about her anyway. Strength at 12. It should be higher constitution at 10, that should be higher, and charisma at 8, that should also be higher. But at least I can just argue that being hot isn't the same as being charismatic. Does help to be cheeked up, though. Miguel is a vampire. We'll go damp here, because it's kind of like that. Bump your intelligence by 1 and your wisdom by 2. Those are sort of super sensey stats. Your movement speed gets bumped by 5 feet. Don't think I ever noticed that before, but cool. Wood Elves defining feature just kind of gets dropped into damp here. Power creep is real, folks. 60 feet of dark vision. A deathless nature that means you don't have to breathe and spider climb for climbing speed equal to your walking speed. When you hit level three, you can even walk on ceilings. A weird amount of people said that I should remake Peter Parker to be a damn peer, but like, no, that's stupid. Okay, Vampire Bite. That deals a D4 of piercing damage. Use your constitution modifier for attack and damage rolls. A number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. You can add that damage you deal to your HPS healing or to your next ability check or attack roll. So while the damage and the attack might be pretty bad right now, the buffs and healing are also pretty bad, but you can bite people. Dampiers get two skills from their ancestral legacy. We'll grab investigation and intimidation and then choose the acrobat background for athletics and acrobatics proficiency. Getting some proficiency bonus help for some skills I wish were better. We'll get two more skills from starting as an artificer like Arcana and Perception. As a magical tinkerer, you put tiny magical effects in tiny non-magical items, little smells, messages, or puffs of smoke. More importantly, we get spells. Thorn Whip lets you make a melee spell attack with a 30 foot range, dealing a d6 of piercing damage and pull the creature up to 10 feet closer for a bit of web snatch in action. Mending lets you put two pieces of something back together or fix a small crack. Just, you know, web it up. We actually need some first level spells. We'll start with jump to triple our jump distance for a simulacrum of web swinging and feather fall to prevent up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage. Can't turn into a splat on the ground if you're Spider-Man. Long Strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed for 45 base movement speed. That's really fast for level one. Faster than a monk at level two. Second level artificers get infusions, little trinkets to make you better than everyone else. Homunculus Servant makes a homunculus servant for you. Call that Lila. Can this homunculus figure out interdimensional travel? Um, maybe. Give her a minute. Advanced Defense adds one to the defense stat of an armor to keep yourself more alive -er. Sending stones are rocky talkies you can use to yell at the other spiders man to chase spiders man that are going to mess up the timeline. And Armor of Magical Strength lets you add your intelligence modifier to strength checks up to six times, recharging 1d6 charges at dawn. It helps make up for the lack of strength you have, though you can only have two infusions, so you'll probably have to just make do with athletics proficiency. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. Armorers get to the best armors. You can choose one of two models. The Infiltrator gives you five more feet of movement speed per turn and dampening field to give you advantage on stealth checks or cancel out disadvantage if you're wearing the heavy stuff. Worth noting, you now have proficiency with the heavy stuff and don't take penalties from missing out on the strength requirements. The lightning launcher isn't so much a 2099 thing, it's a ranged weapon that deals a d6 of lightning damage. Once per turn, you can add a d6 of extra lightning damage. The guardian model gives you a thunder fist that deal a d8 of thunder damage on a hit, and the creatures you hit have disadvantage on attacking anyone else. It's just extra hard punches, so, you know, either would work. Actually, later, guardian's gonna 
going to be better. More on that later. For level artificers, get an ability score improvement or a feat. We're going to bump that intelligence. It's the most important thing for all your future tech. Much like the Jonas Brothers, you're living in the year 3000, or actually 901 years previous, but it rounds up to the Jonas Brothers. Fifth level armorers get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. You can also learn second level spells like Web, filling a 20 foot cube with difficult terrain. Creatures starting their turn inside have to make a dexterity saving throw or they're restrained until they can make an athletics check against your spell DC to break out. And they can burn. So don't burn your webs. Those webs are the webs that you built. They're your ground. So fucking cool. You also get mirror image for free as an armor, conjuring three illusory duplicates that can take hits for you. When someone attacks you, roll a d20. On a six or higher, they'll hit one of the targets. On an eight or higher, they'll hit one of two. And on an 11 or higher, they'll hit one of one. That's why you're called Spider-Man 3. Wait, no. 2099. You can't make 2000 mirror images. That's not fair. And Alter Self lets you change your appearance, breathe underwater and or swim, or most importantly, get sexy claws that deal 1d6 slashing damage, count as magical weapons, and have plus one to attack and damage rolls. You can also make sexy fangs or even sexy horns, but the sexy claws and teeth are the most in character. The only requirement is that they are sexy and they are natural and magical. Six level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus with the tools you're proficient with. You can also grab two more infusions, enhanced arcane focus adds plus one to your attack rolls with your spells and you can ignore all but full cover. Just makes your stuff better and lets you do cool web thwip bank shots with your thorn whip. Resistant armor gives a set of armor resistance to a type of non-physical damage. I could list them all, but I don't want to be here until Miguel actually becomes real. Seventh level artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to the skill check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you as a reaction, a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier per long rest. All the spiders man are smart, but you're the only one smart enough to bring them together to become interplanar cops. Boo. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence modifier for maximum flashing and maximum everything else. Intelligence kind of lets artificers be everything, everywhere, all at once. Ninth level armorers get armor modification, letting you infuse two items for free as long as they fit on your armor, and you can count the armor as separate pieces. A helmet, a chest piece, boots, and a gauntlet. Secret benefit, you're much better at strip poker, kind of have an unfair advantage. It really balances out though, everyone's so thirsty for Miguel, they're gonna be targeting you. You also get third level spells like haste, doubling your movement speed, adding two to your AC, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or use an object, or make one more attack. After you drop concentration, or after a minute, you're gonna have to take a round off of actions and reactions, but after a minute, whatever you are hunting is gonna be done. However you define done. 10th level artificers can infuse two more items. Helm of Awareness is the perfect spidey sense, preventing you from being surprised while you're awake and you have advantage on initiative rolls. Boots of Striding and Springing triple your jump distance. That isn't the jump spell, so you can stack that for knock tuple your jump distance. There isn't a web swinging mechanic, so we just gotta make our own web swinging at home. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, letting you store a spell of second level or lower in an object, then cast that a number of times for free from that object equal to double your intelligence modifier. That is 10 castings of web per day before you run out of fluid. Then you just make more yourself. Gross. 12th level artificers get another ability score improvement or feat. We're going to go for resilient and dexterity, both rounding it up to 14 and giving you proficiency with the saving throw. 13th level artificers get 4th level spells. Freedom of movement prevents you from being slowed down or restrained, and you can break out of non-magical shackles with 5 feet of movement. No other spider's man are going to pin you down, regardless of what's been written on AO3. 14th level artificers get 2 more infusions. We'll just use it to fix our stats. Belt of Hill Giant Strength sets your strength to 21. The Amulet of Health sets your constitution to 19. That is an 18 point swing in one level or the equivalent of nine ability score improvements. God, Artificer is so silly late game. We could have actually done this at level 10 if I didn't want more Spider-Man infusions first. So not even late game, like mid game. 15th level armorers get perfected armor, giving you two options depending on your armor. Guardian model can force a strength saving throw on huge or smaller creatures that end their turn within 30 feet of you. Failing that, they're pulled within five feet of you and you can make a melee weapon attack against them. It is basically reaction thorn whip and you can use it a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. Very rad. Infiltrator's ability isn't in character, so wear the thick stuff. 16th level artificers get another ability score improvement or feat. Let's get that dexterity up to 16 to put it on par with your wisdom. Ideally, these would both be 22. Remember, Spider-Mans are the ultimate Mary Sue characters. No training, just a bite, and they have perfect strength, dex, con, and wisdom. Oh, and they were already smarter than the super scientists in high school. But no one has a problem with it because 90% of them are boys. 17th level artificers can learn 5th level spells. Skill empowerment gives a creature expertise in a skill they're proficient with for an hour, doubling their proficiency bonus with those skills. You have an extra set of skills as Dampier, but now you're not just a jack of all trades, you're a master of one at a time for one hour. 
more. 18th level artificers get two more infusions. Boots of speed let you click together to double your movement speed. I personally think striding and springing is more in character, but with the jump spell and hail giant strength, you already have 63 feet of horizontal jump distance and 24 vertical feet. If you need more than that, I guess go for springing. Otherwise the extra speed is probably way better. Arcane propulsion armor boosts your speed by five feet. You get gauntlets that deal one D8 force damage. You have a thrown distance of 20 feet, max distance of 60 feet. This is your much better web thwip and punching suit. 19th level artificers get our last ability score improvement. Let's go for wisdom. As nimble as you are, it's not like we're getting a lot from that extra dexterity. Wisdom boosts your passive perception, which we also don't really need because of the helm of awareness, but yeah, I don't know. Just take it. Our capstone is the 20th level of artificer. But you said watch out for your multi-closing. I don't care. I don't care at all. I don't care. Whatever. Deal with it. Soul of artifice. Plus one to your saving throws for every item you're attuned to, which should be a plus six bonus. Making your saving throws plus 11 for strength, plus 14 for dexterity, plus 16 for constitution, plus 17 for intelligence, plus 10 for wisdom, and plus five for charisma. You can't even really be banished consistently. And if you should die, you can destroy one of your infusions to stay at one HP instead of dropping to zero. It was already really good. This is just frosting. You won't need because what can kill you? Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are super mobile, running on walls and ceilings with a ton of abilities to boost your movement speed and jump distance. You also stop people from going anywhere with webs and a suit of armor that pulls people in as a reaction. Finally, your saving throws are absurd. I just talked about them. Plus five is your lowest, plus 17 is your highest, and you can add five to them five times per day. For weaknesses, you're not great at convincing people to do things until you add your flash of genius five times per day if you want. Must have met miles in the evening. I guess. You also don't have many ranged options, which isn't a problem when you pair haste with boots of speed for 120 feet of movement speed. Your ranged option is, I am already in your face. Finally, you have multiple concentration spells, so pick and choose what you want to use. Yeah, Miguel is busted. Most spiders persons are, but Miguel takes it to the next level. Do everything. Hunt down the anomalies and never fail. Just watch out for a kid who's like, really likable. Wait, you're just worried about a nice young man? Not totally sure you're the good guy, my guy. Thanks for watching. If you like the video subscribe we've still got a few ideas kicking around follow me on twitch to watch me stream and join the patreon if you want to keep the channel afloat